After the full 30 minute dwell time has passed, dry extract the area thoroughly to remove as much moisture as possible. Use your dry vacuum strokes on both the front and the back of the carpet. Use vacuum only, do not rinse the carpet. Remember we have several different oxidizers we're working with and they'll continue to do their job while the carpet is drying. Once the excess moisture has been removed from the carpet, it can be pulled back to allow access to the plastic and tackless. The plastic can be pulled back from the wall and the cardboard protectors can be removed from the tackless pins at this point, but do not remove the plastic sheeting. Your new carpet padding is installed directly over the plastic and connected to the uncontaminated padding. Trim the plastic sheeting to the tackless strip and to the carpet padding. Use pad tape to secure your new carpet pad to the existing uncontaminated pad. Gently reinstall the carpet. Remember that the carpet backing isn't as strong while wet, so stretch it gently and tuck it in. Let's look at an actual urine contamination job. The main contamination is in the corner of the room but extends about six feet down the wall. First, we gently disengage the carpet from the tackless and pull it back to expose the contaminated pad. Then, to make your job easier during the reinstallation process, place your new pad directly over the contaminated area and cut through both sections of pad at once. Momentary contact with the contaminated pad will not be enough to contaminate the new pad and you'll have a perfect match when you reinstall. Remove your perfectly matched pad and set it aside for later use in the procedure. Remove the contaminated pad and dispose of it. Sweep up any dust or debris that's accumulated in the area. Note the tackless here has some staining but has not deteriorated. It can be sealed and does not need to be replaced. Remember to filter your odor barrier before filling your sprayer. This can be done with a paint filter, available for just a few cents at any paint store, or you can use cheesecloth or even an old pair of nylons. As we discussed before, a thorough application of odor barrier to contaminated surfaces is very important to the success of your procedure. Pay special attention to the junction between the floor and drywall, as well as to any contaminated tactless that's being treated and not replaced. As you can see, the baseboards have been removed in preparation for sealing and repainting. When using plastic to create your trough, follow the contour of the floor so the plastic forms a tray. Overlap the uncontaminated pad by at least two feet to keep it dry during this process. Use tape to secure the plastic to the wall and prevent the OSR solution from seeping under the wall and into the next room. Now that the trough has been created, we can lay the carpet back down to be treated with the OSR. Placing the carpet back in the trough we created makes it easy to thoroughly treat the carpet with OSR. Here are a couple of tips when mixing your OSR solution. First, if you're using a 5 gallon container, only put about 3 gallons of hot water in at a time. That way, if the OSR foams up, it should still be contained within the bucket. Second, Add the OSR powder to the water and not the other way around. You'll find you get much less foam and the product will be easier to mix. And finally, mix your OSR solution right next to the area you're going to be treating. If you do find yourself with an excess of foam, you'll be able to direct it to the area you're treating and not leave a trail through your customer's home that will need to be cleaned up. Dilute one cup of OSR powder per gallon of hot water for your ready-to-use solution. While it's quite common for the product to foam, mineral content in the water may reduce the amount. The oxidizers in the product are still working, but may not be as volatile. Again, make your job easier and mix the product right next to the area you're treating. And mix your OSR thoroughly. Unmixed OSR powder can leave a residue in the carpet fibers that may not be apparent until after it dries. That will mean a return trip to reclean the area. Saturate the carpet thoroughly with the OSR solution. We aren't misting or spraying the carpet with the OSR solution. We're pouring it on. Once you have enough solution on the carpet, use your wand without any of the hoses attached as a squeegee to ensure all contaminated fibers are saturated. Allow the solution to dwell for 30 minutes. The primary oxidation reaction is taking place during this time 
and while it's working, we can work in other areas of the house. Whether it's removing stains, doing repairs, even straightening your van, do what you need to do to stay busy while the OSR is allowed its full 30-minute dwell time. After the OSR has been allowed to dwell, use your wand with vacuum-only dry strokes to remove excess solution. Remember, there are several time-to-release oxidizers in the OSR. Even though you may not be seeing a visible reaction like you did within the first 30 minutes, the OSR is still active and will continue to work removing odors and stains during the drying process. Rinsing the face fibers will inhibit this reaction and will often leave water markings on lighter carpets as it dries. Once the primary extraction has been accomplished, it's time to assess the effectiveness of the treatment. Some severe urine contaminations may require a second application of the OSR solution and a second 30-minute dwell time to be completely effective. As you become more experienced with the procedure, you'll be able to determine when a second application is necessary.